Welcome everyone to Mountain Blade Warband with the Force mod. For those who don't know, Mountain Blade Mountain Blade and Warband is pretty much a you take an army and go conquer the world style of game. And Floris expanded to it a massive amount and it's wonderful and amazing. So, this is what we're gonna be starting off with. I had a series on this earlier, but I have switched computers, um, new microphone, new everything recording software, all the kinds of new stuff. So I couldn't actually continue that saved version. So now we're here, another playthrough. We're going to start off here on just the first episode, just trying to create the character, go through a little bit of the basics. They had so much more to this game, and it's been a while, so I don't know if they've added any new mods since I've done it, um, to change any new features, any of that stuff. So we're going to find out. And here we start off. You hear about Caldradia, a land torn between rival sovereignties, battling each other for supremacy, a haven for knights and mercenaries, cutthroats and adventurers. All willing to risk their lives in pursuit of fortune, power, or glory. In this land which holds great dangers and even greater opportunities, you believe you may leave your past behind and start a new life. You feel that finally you hold that key of your destiny in your hands. Free to choose as you will, and that whatever course you take, great adventures will await you. We're going forward with this. Alright, so here's our background. We're going to start off male, because on the females in this, they make a huge difference. Which I think is really cool that they added that. Um, one of the coolest things about this is that it will actually tell you what your stats are whenever you choose. Uh, but I'm going to go for more of an archer style person. I like that. Um, gather companions and fog of war. Expanded troops. Yeah. So this will give us all the troops. Wait. Hmm. Yeah. I like Swaya myself because I love their knights. They're very, very powerful. But I think actually they reworked all the troops and stuff and balance the balancing for all that. So I don't know if they're still the best anymore. I don't know. But they are the ones that normally get wiped out first. Despite having the strongest knights in the game. Oh well. But we're going to go for a sort of archer style character with a two-handed sword. Why the two-handed sword versus the one? Because that means we can take a bow, two sets of arrows, and a long sword. So when we run out of arrows, we can just beat people in the face. I've always found it a very successful tactic. So what we're going to be looking for is a hunter. Hunters will give us the power two, or a power draw, plus two the power draw, which allows us to have a bow. Uh, we don't really need power strike. Athletics, forging, tracking, that sort of stuff. Uh, let's see, we're going to be running... So all these sort of have a... Stepchild will allow us to have horse riding, which is good, and horse archer. Another good one. Power draw will be a plus three. There you became... And all these things have different sort of uh, effects on it. So slave trader, probably get more for uh, leadership and allowing you to have slaves. Prisoner management, which is a wonderful thing. That's how you make a lot of money. Bandits, um, you get a lot of different things there. Gladiator. So they all have different things. And I think I'm going to go for a game poacher because, again, that, that's going to boost my power draw. And the higher that is, the more powerful bows I can run with and the more damage I'll be doing. And just, you know, it just helps. And the reason for I set out, I don't think this does anything. Um, besides, yeah, I think the only thing that does is just sort of give you a different motives. I don't think it changes anything. Sense of duty, yeah, I don't think it changes anything, so. So we're going to go for love for money and power, because that's why we're here. We're planning on taking over the world. But one of the cool things you can do with this is because Flores is so difficult early. You can join someone else's army, and from there... You can sort of gain a little bit more experience, level up some, get some new equipment. Uh, it's also a completely different way of playing this game. Which I think it's a really cool thing that they added. I'm hoping they still keep it in the features. But they had it the last time I played this, so I'm hoping they kept it. So yeah, here's our stats. Strength 9, agility 10. And here's our biography. 
You were born years ago in a land far away. Your father was a hunter. You were the son of a family who lived off the woods, doing whatever they needed to make ends meet. Hunting, woodcutting, making arrows, even a spot of poaching whenever things got tight. Winter was never a good time for your family, as the cold took animals and people alike. But you always lived to see another dawn, though your brothers and sisters might not be so fortunate. You started to learn about the world almost as soon as you could walk and talk. You spent your early life as a stepchild. Steep step. I don't know how exactly you're supposed to pronounce that. I guess we'll call it steep. As a boy growing out of childhood, you rode the great steeps on a horse of your own, learning the ways of the grass in the desert. Although you sometimes went hungry, you became a skillful hunter and a pathfinder in your trackless country. Your body, too, started to harden with muscle as you grew into the life of a nomad man. Then, as a young adult, life changed as it always does. You became a game poacher, though the distinction felt sudden to you. Somewhere along the way, you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. Dissatisfied with the common's desperate scrabble for coin, you took to your local lord's own forest and decided to help yourself to its bounty. Laws be damned! You hunted stags, boars, and geese and sold the precious meat under the table. You cut down trees right under the watchman's noses and turned them into firewood that will warm many freezing houses during winter. All for a few silvers, of course. But soon everything changed and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. What made you take this decision was the lust for money and power. Only you know exactly what caused you to give up your old life and become an adventurer. To everyone else, it's clear that you're now motivated solely by personal gain. You want to be rich, powerful, respected, feared. You want to be the one whom others hurry to obey. You want people to know your name and tremble whenever it's spoken. You want everything, and you won't let anyone stop you from having it. As a common man, you may face some difficulties establishing yourself as an equal among Calradia's great lords. So yeah. They have a whole system for being a lord and all that stuff. It's really cool. But let's go ahead and uh, I, I think we have time for maybe getting in the tutorial. Um, I guess I'll leave those off because they keep being unchecked. Okay. So I have a couple different options here. Realistic, no quitting, which means whatever the hell happens, happens. And I have no choice but to follow it. Or I can save scum quit whenever I don't like it. Because this will be a series for YouTube, and I'll probably also do some Twitch streams, so if you want to check those out, make sure you subscribe to me at twitch.tv slash Games. And uh, you can also check out some other streams. So here we are, and I think we're going to have to go realistic on this one. Now enter your name and distribute your attribute skills on weapon points. You can click on various elements on the screen to learn how each one will affect your character. All right. So we'll go Sivret there. Let's see. Power draw is huge. Uh, no, off strength on the skill. Fair enough. Athletics, riding, horse archery, all that stuff. It's huge hordes, foraging, training, tracking, pathfinding. Um, I think prisoner management is definitely one you want to get early because that'll allow you to start capturing people. I see agility. Julie will um, weapon master shield of thugs riding horses looting strength of course all the bow stuff and I'm gonna have to if I'm not mistaken get to 15 if I want to be able to up my power draw to five charisma is always good um, that's prisoner management leadership trade one of the best things I have experienced ever in this mod though is having a huge army regular version you might get over a hundred maybe just but it's not much, maybe 120. On here, you can get up to near 300, 400s in size of your army. And it's wonderful. But then again, you also have to deal with thousands of barbarians. So it has its trade-offs. So I think what we're going to do... Up Intelligence, because it's every three points that it's a major hit. And we'll go ahead and put that up. Um, I think intelligence will also give you extra points. Yeah, every point in terms of melee gives you one extra point. So you can put in the skills here. So like I said, I didn't think I was going to be able to get that. 
Um, engineer is good for sieging. Party heal speed is increased by level. Each point is good. I am going to go for wound treatment. Because remember, these things can always get picked up by uh, others in your party. Horse archery. Riding. Hmm. I mean, I could get a bigger inventory, but again, it's it's always those trade-offs. Um, I'm gonna go riding again because that that should allow me to get some better horses. And of course, I'll apply that to my two-handed because I can't get my archery up. Besides, it will automatically do it. Now we're not gonna have time to actually go through the tutorial, so we'll just go ahead create the character and. Uh, Call the episode there. All right, we're gonna be a nice tan person, like everyone else on this. We're gonna have a nice beard. Let's see this. Yeah, let's go spiky hair. Although I don't think many people actually had spiky hair back there, but eh, we can be real old. But we're gonna go super young. What do I want to do for hair color? I guess I can go sort of closer to mine, which is sort of a darker blondy color. I don't know, somewhere right in there would probably work. I really don't care about this because I'm going to be honest with you, you never see your face. For the most part, you never see it. So yeah, I can go through and do all this, but the very limited times you see it, I don't think it's worth it. Alright. You came by caravan through the heartlands of Calradia. Green shoots of wheat, barley, and oats are beginning to push through the snow-capped mountains. Herds of cattle and sheep are grazing on the spring grass. Occasionally, too, you catch sight of one of the great war horses, uh, the pride of the Swadian nobility, which is what I was talking about, the horses being awesome, and the uh, knights. The land here is rich, but also troubled, as the occasional burnt-out farm bears witness. You keep a wide berth of the forest, where desperate men have taken refuge, and it is some relief when you crest the ridge and catch sight of the great port of Praven, its rooftops made golden by the last rays of the setting sun. So I guess we're getting to Praven and the Kingdom of Swadia? Right, as night time. You are exhausted by the time you find the end in Praven, and fall asleep quickly. However, you awake before dawn, and are eager to explore the, your surroundings. You venture out into the street which are all deserted. All of a sudden, you hear a sound that stands the hairs on your neck on end. The rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard. Alright, so we're going to call episode one here. Yes, I'm going to leave it on a cliffhanger as we're about to get attacked. So, we'll leave it here, and uh, I'm actually going to continue the recording straight off here and go straight into episode two, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how this goes. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That way you can catch when the next couple episodes come out. Also, make sure you hit the like button and uh, leave your comments below if you want me to keep working on this. Uh, if you have any sort of game suggestions, maybe some tips or something on how I can succeed a little bit better in this. But uh, thanks everyone for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Adios.